I recently made a Cinderella inspired gown. Join me as I show you how I did it. G'day everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you my Cinderella inspired cosplay. I've been working on it for a couple of months now and it's part of the Scrap Epic Challenge that I put out on this channel oh, a couple of months back and it's in conjunction with Alana Owlet. Check out her channel. The idea behind the Scrap Epic Challenge is that you can't spend more than $20. It was a case of use what's in your stash. And all in all, I spent a whopping $3.50 on this cosplay. That's right, I only spent $3.50 Australian and that was for the base for this headband. And to be honest, I think my husband actually paid for that, so, hey, free! Now, originally, Cinderella wasn't my first choice. I was actually all pumped up and ready to make Aurora, mostly because I'm tired all the time and the idea of being a sleeping princess really appealed to me. However, I made the mock-up and I just was not feeling it. I just was not really digging the design anymore. However, there's another reason why I chose to do Cinderella instead of Aurora, and it's a bit more personal. The reason is my nan. My nan got sick earlier this year and she passed away. This is very hard for me to talk about because my nan was an incredibly special person. She taught me so many things, one of which was how to sew which, you know, I'm kind of using now. And why I associate Cinderella with her is because when she was 20 years old, she was actually cast in a paid production of Cinderella as the fairy godmother. And something I really wanted to do was I wanted to incorporate a bit of Nan into this cosplay. So I actually inherited a whole lot of her sewing stuff because no one else in my family sews. One of the things that I inherited was this lace that I've actually used on the cosplay. It may seem really silly and real little, but it really means a lot to me that I was able to incorporate something as small as that into this cosplay. Nan was a huge supporter of my cosplay and would always, you know, want to see what my next project was. So with me using what she had in this costume, I felt like she was a part of the journey with me. So enough about that, and I'm sorry if that was a bit of a downer, I just wanted to give you the heads up of why I'm not doing Aurora. Uh, enjoy the video of how I made this Cinderella look. First up, I made a quick mock-up using some calico. Some people only like to make one side of a bodice, but I like to make the full bodice. That way I can fit it easier. However, I did only make one sleeve and one puff for the skirt. It was fun working that one out, but hey, more on that later. Then I pulled my material from my stash. I had things that I wanted to use. I have my gorgeous Japoni silk, some wide horsehair braid I wanted to play around with in the skirt, my Nan's lace, iridescent rhinestones, pearl beads, and some white crystallized organza. Not too much to it at all. Then here are my bodice pieces after I ripped the mock-up apart. This quarter circle is my circle skirt guide. I'll show you how it works soon. Firstly though, the bodice. I pin all my bodice pieces out and cut them. You may notice some discoloration in this first piece. It was actually sun damage, but nothing to worry about because I was using it for the lining. That's right, I'm lining silk with silk. Ain't I fancy? I also made some alterations to the calico mock-up and let out the waist slightly at the sides. This is why we do mock-ups after all. Then I did this all again on fabric that wasn't sun damage for the outer layer. And side note, yep, those are Minnie Mouse PJs. I love them and I sew and exist in my PJs at all times when I don't have to leave the house. <laughs> Please tell me I'm not alone in that. <laughs> Next, I unpin all the mock-up fabrics. Then I pinned the lining and outer layers of the front centers and the front sides together, and then the back centers and the back sides together. And all of those went through the sewing machine. Next, I pinned the back and the front sides together of both the lining and the outer layers. I kept the shoulders free and sewed those four lines. Then, as a rule of sewing, I pressed all the seams open. So far, not looking too bad. Next, I laid the two bodice layers right sides facing each other. I pinned along the bottom and around the neckline, keeping the shoulders and arm size open. However, as you can see, I also took the opportunity beforehand to overlock the arm size. Then I go ahead and sew it. I don't have a clip of me doing this, but once it was sewn where I had pinned, I clipped all the corners and turned the bodice right side out. Then I repinned along the edges to keep it flat and top stitched around. Then I French seamed the shoulders up and top stitched that down. 
With the bodice somewhat done, it's time for the sleeves. This was a quick sleeve I drafted up using my puff sleeve tutorial and free downloadable sleeve block. I cut out four pieces, two for the lining and two for the outer layer. Then I placed two pieces on itself and pinned along the bottom and sewed it. The next part looks a bit messy, but it was simple. I opened up the sleeves and sewed the edges together. This way, the seams were all on the inside between the lining and the outer layers. In hindsight, if I was to remake this, I would French seam both these steps because sometimes organza has attitude and it's spiky and it likes to fray. Next, I quickly ran the top of the sleeve through the overlocker and pinned and sewed the sleeve into the bodice. Then I clipped around the arm side, pinned the seam into the bodice and top stitched around the arm side, locking in the sleeve seam so it wouldn't be visible through the organza when being worn. Okay, skirt time. How this little paper gadget works is that I cut out the quarter circle I require and pin it to the corner of the folded fabric. Then I measure out from the circular line how long I want the circle skirt to be. Make a few marks and cut it out. It's that simple. I left the skirt's front half as a whole piece, but for the back, because I was inserting a zipper, I cut the skirt into two. I will say that I do like this little paper gadget from whatthecraft.com, but it is designed for an elasticated waistband and I tend to do more fitted circle skirts, so I size smaller. Once the circle skirt is cut, I let it hang for 24 hours. The next day, I remeasured the length and cut off any drop. Next, I sewed the front panel to the back panels with a French seam and top stitched that down. Lastly, to prep the skirt, I went around the entire skirt with the overlocker. Now onto the skirt puffs. I told you would get there. With the remaining crystallized organza that I had, I cut two circles, approximately 80 centimeters in diameter. That's about 32 inches for those using the Imperial system. Then I took each circle, folded them in half, pinned them, and then ran them through the overlocker to prevent fraying. Next, I laid out my skirt right side up and popped the half circles on the waist at the sides. Then I pinned them roughly where I wanted them to be gathered down. I did this as I ran it through the sewing machine, gathering as I went between the pins. At this point, the skirt is looking good. Let's put it all together. Very carefully, I found the waist point on my bodice and pinned the skirt along that line. I was very happy. My measurements were spot on. Yay for the small wins. Then I whip stitched the skirt to the lining of the bodice, being careful not to catch the outer layer. Sorry that my camera decided to go completely out of focus here. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. I did a quick test fit and I sewed the back seam with a large allowance. I then ironed that seam open, tucked the seam under itself and ironed that flat as well. Then I sewed the zipper lazy style. I pinned it against the seam, sewed down and around it, and then I grabbed my trusty quick unpick and opened up the seam. Hey look, an even zipper! Whoop whoop! With the skirt now able to close, it's time to give the dress some character! I pinned the horsehair braid along the base of the skirt. Because it has a very loose weave, it's very flexible and will mould a bit to the curves you need it to go around. Then I sewed it in. I then flipped it over and now it's on the inside of the skirt and because of that it had a super crisp line for the hem. I pinned it and then I sewed the top of the horsehair braid down. Ah, look at that wave at the bottom. Isn't it fun? Add a petticoat or two underneath and you've got yourself a party. Right, time for decoration. First up, the lace. This had actually been balled up in a bag for quite a number of years, so I ironed it out flat. I decided I wanted to do a line at the bottom of the skirt, a line around the waist, and a line around the neckline. The ones on the bodice though needed to be altered slightly because the lace was just a bit too wide. So using a needle and thread, I bunched up the center at the widest part. It created a cute flower-esque motif and gave the lace a little bit more texture, which I liked. I hand sewed this into place on the bodice. Next, I pinned the lace around the bottom of the skirt. I hand sewed along the very bottom because it overhung from the edge slightly. And hey look, a different set of PJs! To lock the lace in place, I machine sewed the top of the lace to the skirt. This also helps secure the horsehair braid a bit more. On to the decoration of the lace. 
It started with a teardrop pearl being sewn into the center of the widest part of the lace, and for the bodice's lace, it came out of the center of the gathered section. Then I sewed smaller pearls to the dots in the lace. It was at this point that I felt like the sleeves could be improved, so I made a small gathering of the fabric in the center to create a little bit more interest. Then I added some pearls because, well, why not? Lastly, it was time for the bling. I used two different sizes of iridescent clear rhinestones and just had so much fun blinging up the lace. What is a Disney princess's magical ball gown without some bling? And with that, the dress itself was done. On to accessories. Firstly, the one thing that was actually bought for this project, the headband. It was looking a bit flat and Cinderella's has a bit more of a puffy headband. I measured out the length and the widest width of the band. Then I cut out a strip of wadding to match that. With hot glue, I stuck the wadding onto the headband. Then I cut out a wide strip of silk on the bias from some scraps and glued one edge of it down on the inside of the headband. Starting from the middle, I pulled the fabric taut and around the band, folded the raw edges in on itself and whip stitched it down. I did this all along the headband. I cut off the excess and folded the ends in on itself and stitched those down too. And then the headband was done. We're on the home stretch now, the wig. I took a blonde long wig I had in my stash and chopped a chunk of it off. Using my curling iron, I curled the hair, finishing it with a blast from a hairdryer and then pinned it up to allow it to cool in shape. Ah, look at that monster! Once cool, I began from the bottom, unpinning the curls and separating each of the curls into three. The volume was intense. Finally, I pinned the curls into place and added a black ribbon, as I wanted to work in the black ribbon that I was going to use for her necklace. And I liked the touch of old school Regency look too. And here we are, the finished production of Cinderella, at least my inspired version. It was actually a really fun cosplay to make. What I love about this was that it wasn't exactly what I had pictured, but I had so much fun experimenting and just creating and just going with the vibe. My final thoughts is that I can't wait to get proper photos of this. It's so much fun to wear and it's super, super comfortable. Anyway guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, please leave me a comment and smash that like button. I'll see you next time. Bye.